Oh, what is up with it? Ho ho! What's up, Bobby? What's up, Toph? How are you, man? How are you doing? I hope everyone. Wait, I just want to make sure everyone can see me. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay, all things considered. Um. Well, my, my audio is gonna be echoing. Okay, cool. Looking at the chat. Hey, I'm happy to see some of the guys that I see in the chat. In the chat. What's up, chat? Like Rishi. What's up, Rish? Edwin Budding. Dude, um, yeah, I'll start by saying I'm raising money for uh, Rape Abuse Incest National Network, um, R-A-I-N-N, -N, Rain, and I'm going to be matching uh, donations up to up to 1K. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not going to, I'll, like, shout it out if we get any, like, big donations or whatever, but, you know, in the meantime, I just thought I'd get that out of the, get that out of the way. Uh, they're the largest American nonprofit anti-sexual assault organization. Largest in the United States, and um, I'm sure you've seen. If you guys have been paying attention to, you know, social media or whatever, people have been doing a lot of kind of donation drives for this kind of thing because it's very pertinent right now, and uh, it's a good cause. So, uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be going on. I'll shout it out if we get any big donations. Otherwise, I'm gonna kind of just let it run. Bobby, how you doing, man? I want to talk about. I'm doing all right, Holmes. I want to talk about right. you, man. I want to. I want to. I want to hear how you're doing, and and. Uh, yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm still on my Twitter break. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm taking uh, taking a break from work too. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what's happening right now. Well, I mean, we'll get into it because I mean, obviously, some shit's going down uh, on social media and in, in the community, and I've been thinking about. Well, even right, I got my signs up, my protest signs, mm -hmm. uh, even in the world, and um, yeah, I mean, not being on social media at this time, that's kind of like. It's good. It yeah. feels good because, you know, Twitter. Um, I'm saying that I'm a little bit low. I'm I'm gonna turn you up. I'm gonna figure that, it out. How to turn you up? It's on my side though. Well, you sound good to me. Oh, you know what I can just do? I can just turn up. I can just go into the audio thing and OBS. Hang on a minute. Yeah. All right. Say some shit. Test ding. One two three. That how should be better. Like that. That should be how better. Like those words. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, being off be social media, and I'm gonna lift my mic. I think I can lift it with these books. It's the old, old school solution. I kind of want one of the mic arms, but what are you gonna do? Oh yeah, um, dude, I actually got a mic arm. I haven't installed it yet, so <laughs> but I got uh, one. You got it. You got to install it, dude. Yeah. Okay, people are saying it's great. Okay, thanks, Dove. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, being off social media. I swear to God, I do feel better, like much better, like mentally in general. Um, I don't know what it was, but I uninstalled Twitter one day, two months ago, three months ago. I don't even remember when. Yeah. Um, and I felt a lot better. I don't know. I just take my take my um, take my phone out habitually, you know, and just scroll on Twitter. Yeah. And I would do that all the time, and I would read stuff, and I don't know. Some of it's some of it's hurts. Yeah. Some of it hurts. Some of, it some hurts. of the time. A lot Dude. of non melee stuff. Uh -huh. A lot of non melee stuff. Sometimes I like reading the non melee stuff, man. I like, I mean, I don't know, especially this past week or whatever. Like, I follow a lot of people that aren't really adjacent to the Smash community or even gaming at all. And uh, it's nice to get a reminder sometimes of mm -hmm. that there's other stuff going on. Although, these days, I guess a lot of that stuff is also negative. I mean, it's, I don't know. There's so much stuff I'm just sad about right now, man. Right. So, I mean, that's something that, uh, that's something that I think we should talk about because I feel like, yeah. you know, do we have an obligation to be on social media? I don't know. That um, is... But I'm doing well, and I think the biggest reason I'm doing well is because I'm kind of I'm prioritizing taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Yeah. I... But it also sucks to take care of yourself. Why do you think we don't take care of ourselves? Dude. It's because we feel like we got to take care of, you know, we got other things to take care of. Yeah. That's why we don't take care of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, that's hella true. But uh, yeah. So what can I say? I'm I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm excited to talk with you. I'm excited. To talk, I'm always excited, excited to, talk to with you. have an opportunity to talk to the people. Yeah. About current events. Thank you, Mango, for the host. Appreciate that. Oh, Mango, Mango, Mango. There's a guy I miss. Yeah. Um, dude. Yeah, I actually, I, I that sounds super relatable to me, man. Like I um. I had this same kind of moment where, you know, I was kind of like, shit, like, I really feel like I should tune out of all this shit. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, fuck, man, like, I mean, 
you know, there's, if anything, people are calling for, they're like, people are saying, like, you know, we need better leadership, we need better, yeah, you know, and I'm kind of like, well, fuck, I mean, it's not like I signed up for this when I started commentating, playing Smash, whatever, but like, you know, de facto or whatever right now is like, uh, oh, update the donation command to be for rain. yeah, I can do that. Oh, you're talking about the command, right? Can you just, can I just mod you Jack and you do command. it, Michael Radar, can you do it? Can you just can you just do it? You can just do edit com, you know. Do it. Love that. Yeah, it's um. Just have it point to my uh. Just have it point to my. Just have it point to my my here. I'll just you know what I'll just I better just do it. I better just do it. Yeah, I could I could talk for a minute while you do it. Yeah, you just, um, just talk. Yeah, man, it's tough. Uh, leadership in communities like these, I just feel I feel like no one votes to make somebody a leader you know uh it just kind of happens organically and i definitely feel now more than ever like as i'm becoming an adult as i'm a dad like that for sure the most important thing that a leader needs to do is kind of take care of themselves uh because only when you're stable can you take care of other things uh and can you show up as like your best self so i don't know uh that's kind of putting me through a loop because yeah yeah you hear my kid I, I, he's I, gonna he's gonna come in he's coming in that's uh, he's dope. been banging on the door for like, I mean, i'm down know, two minutes how old is denado denado's like three and something three and some change now he can just come in oh it's zoe love you oh i thought denado wanted to come in but it's zoe look at that look at that does that work? I'm using my twitch.streamlabs.com link for my donation, Michael Radar. I hope that's sufficient. I think it is. I assume that this will just go to my thing, and then people can use this, and it's supposed to be linked to my PayPal. I'm like 90% sure it's linked to my PayPal, um, so it should just work. Also, I should see donation things on OBS, so, you know, it should just work. Um, wait, I edited the, the donate command. Oh my god. Did someone change it back? Hang on. Edit com donate. Alright, it should it so should be fixed now. Yeah, right. go ahead. So what are we talking about here? Let's let's start that way. Let's yeah. just uh, let's just address what we're talking about. What are we I talking think, about here? Well for me and you I'm interested in there's like there's like there's the topic of like, you know, mental health and like how much i don't know how pertinent this is to everybody i think it's pertinent for like me and you and like particular people in chat it's like mental health and like when when and how do you responsibly tune in and tune out i guess um i'm definitely interested in that i definitely have this big i was i was caught you know caught, i got interrupted by the donate thing um no it's all good which is important <clears throat> but yeah like i had the same moment where i was like well shit like someone's it's you know it's kind of like someone's got to do it like if i just tune out you know isn't right. that bad then what happens I don't, I don't know. then what happened right um and i'm also you know when we chatted on the phone you know i think one theme was like well shit like how do we you know people have a lot of, well okay yeah people have a lot of ideas of like what we should be doing better moving forward like what uh are there rules that we should be implementing you know yep. should we have yep. age limits for like you know you gotta have a parent if you're under certain you know things like that so like concrete rules but also like you know, I think one thing you've always been good at is, like, kind of identifying, like, roles within a community and, like, mm. kind of what leadership even looks like from, like, a organizational level and, like, how do we fill in those gaps, I guess? Like, what do we look for? What have we been missing? What, yeah. what are roles we've had in the past? I mean, you know, I think of people like Prague, who I think had a pretty clear leadership role in the past where he was very outspoken about, like, ways that, you know, the community and communities in general can be better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh yeah i mean you know like yeah what 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 kind of people yeah what kind of people do we need and like what can people because i mean i'm sure there's a lot of people wondering how they can maybe get involved or how they could be helpful and you know that's the kind of thing that i want to sort of yeah explore. for sure yeah. i think that's definitely true too yeah people do want to know what they can do um i guess as i've been reflecting so like i said i, I mean to you told me what went down on like thursday or something um, yeah and yeah. uh that's tough <laughs> i'm sorry to everybody who has been there live getting the updates sequentially as they came in because i got one update and i was like damn um i did save the good update for last 
which if is I actually roll back, per, yeah yeah <laughs> i'm just setting up now yeah um but uh i guess here's my like when i first heard um obviously especially in the new york community you know i'm from philadelphia i was kind of close with you know everybody in new york uh so yeah it's tough tough to hear tough to hear um <sighs> always tough to hear when people who you know you respect or who are in positions of authority or power like don't use that power properly like that's messed up that sucks um but as i've reflected on it i guess the way that i've okay so there's a couple of things that i'm happy about number one that victims came forward like that's dope because it doesn't always happen number two that they were received well and that like bans actually happen like swiftly i think that that's good oh my basic um, socks let me turn I don't the think sound. that that'll, it's, it's not a high bar, but like communities have not met that bar. Like yeah. that's a fact, right? What's his name is, uh, what's his name? Uh, Supreme Court guy. That guy's, Kavanaugh? that guy's a sitting judge, right? Kavanaugh is yeah, on the yeah, Supreme yeah. Court, right? Right. So we're doing better than that. And that's good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like, ah. Uh, do you have music on, by the way? You don't, right? No, I don't have music on. I could put on no. some melee background music. If, if there was just a test, there was just a test. It more comfortable. Yeah, I'm down. But I'll put on some. Stuff. I probably can't hear it, so then I'll still just be sitting with my own silence, as I think. Yeah, you'd have to put it on as well. But, I mean, you could look at it as a blessing, not a curse. You could put whatever music you want. That's true. Yeah. That is true. That's how I was um, so yeah, like, isn't that good? Like, I guess I feel like everything, ha you know, our community is evolving and that's, uh, that's a good thing. You know, we you have to, <clears throat> like when things are bad, Yeah. yes, of course it sucks to bring it up and have it be exposed to the light. But the alternative is that things are bad and not exposed, which is actually exactly what no one wants. Yeah. So it's good that the bad has come out and it's good that that prompted others to bring more out. And it's good that we're kind of like, doing the right things in that moment like that i feel really good about yeah that's um, true. and i feel like that's what we need to make sure continues to happen like can we do a better job helping people feel safe to come forward when things happen that suck yeah absolutely that's i think mm -hmm. a huge problem that we need to figure out um, yeah and even probably still to yeah the extent that you but, know but yeah go ahead the thing that i have sat with for many many years is that like sometimes i feel like there's a sense from people uh or from the community or even people at large in the mainstream that like you know we'll say we need to do something about this and um sometimes i feel like it, when i think about some of the problems uh that we're dealing with we're really talking about power and misuse of power and to my in my understanding like that's a problem that humanity has not yet solved um I know that there's a lot of like want to change things, but sometimes I guess I sit with the idea of like, you know, the melee community did not invent this problem. Like it's not, it's not a problem inherent to us. We're inheriting problems of like society and of our species and stuff. Uh -huh. They're uh -huh. like huge, hairy problems. And so, um, there's a question of what do you do about that? I mean, what I don't think you do is throw away the whole community because like there's an inherent problem with power dynamics like you that doesn't make any sense um yeah i have something to say on that topic in a second yeah but well i guess and then the question becomes what do you do and i mean there's no clear answer like that's what i feel oh, deeply, my basic is sucks. there isn't really a clear answer so like we have to try a bunch of random stuff uh and like hopefully we figure it out but at the end of the day i feel like um we need people to care about each other. Um, like that's kind of what we're like any process I don't think is going to solve it. I guess that's the thing that I've learned in corporate America or like that I've thought about a lot. Like yeah. we need people to care about the community and about each other. And when that happens, then like we can find ways to get through like the sticking points. But when it comes to process and having like a really good system or whatever, people play the system, no matter what system it is, like you can't have enough rules and regulations to make sure that people are not going to abuse power Use it's just it. not the yeah. way it works right right it's um so yeah i had this um you know i'll tell you a bit about my kind of where i was at you know in my head you know this week but i was kind of like 
There was definitely a point, and I was, like, pretty sleep-deprived. I literally, like, <clears throat> there was a day where I literally couldn't sleep. I think I hit you up after that. Yeah, you did. But, um, yeah, I ended up doing a stream at, like, 6 in the morning from my phone. I was just walking around. And, yeah, I had this moment where I was kind of like, you know, yeah, this fucking, it's just a lot. And I was like, and, you know, I'd seen some gloom and doom kind of comments and things like that. Like, some people were like, well, shit, this whole shit's over, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, we can't even really have a Smash Bros. Mm-hmm. moving forward and things like that. And I was kind of thinking, yeah, man. I mean, there was a moment where I really did want to just, like, delete my Twitter or whatever. And, like, you know, I wanted to, like, pull a Mike Ross, basically, at least. Um, and I was like, I mean, that would be the best for my own mental health or whatever. And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it was just a bad idea. Maybe we throw the, you know, throw the baby out the bathwater or whatever. Um, but then I realized, like, for me, like, I was thinking about it from my own perspective. And, like, okay, well, what am I going to do? So I go back to working a corporate job, right? I go back to working in tech or whatever. And then I started thinking about what the, what that implied. And then I was like, well, shit, like, Oof. all of the problems that, like, we think we have with the community, like, those exist. Those power structures exist. And if anything, they're exacerbated. And if anything, the reason yeah. that, like, this shit hasn't yeah. blown up in, like, corporate America and, like, you know, the Silicon Valley tech industries is, is because, like... The power structures are probably, probably so much more entrenched that like even more so, just yeah. even more so. And then I was kind of like, well, shit. When I think about it that way, I actually want to stay in Smash, and I want to like at least I have some semblance of like the ability to change stuff here in the future. Like, totally. You know, yeah. Like at least like if we, you know, if me and you stay in Smash, like at least I can try to exert some sort of positive influence in the long run. You know, and, and yeah. learn from all this. I, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. It, it's it's everywhere, and it's like, it's pretty, it's pretty, just. I mean, right. I don't know. Matt. So once and then once you acknowledge that, you like I guess I'm I'm just looking at chat. I have it open yeah. on my phone. Um, oh, cool. I definitely think that alcohol plus um, people being young, like those are legitimate uh, things to examine. I feel I feel like if we're if we're noticing that the root is so deep that you can't police it then we have to look at like what's the deepest level that we can influence yeah and uh i definitely feel that um dang dude i've i've actually one thing that i've been thinking a lot about is that i've gone to a lot of tournaments and i really haven't like made a big effort to just say hi to people and like you know just people i don't already know just kind of like Mm. be friendly um i think that sucks in retrospect like i wish that I had done that more. I mean, I guess, you know, I'm busy or whatever, but uh, yeah, I feel like when I think about protecting the people who are most vulnerable, yeah, having people have friends in general is probably really good. Um, yeah. And I guess I'm thinking about what what is a creepy person <laughs> and what is it? what does that mean? Like, how do we make friends with people who are uh, more on the outside and who have like a creepy kind of vibe? Like, but I don't really know what's going on with them, you know? Um, Do you think that this is something that if you tackle it from the lens of, like, what it was like back in the day, it kind of... Because I feel like when I think about when I got into the scene, like, 2008, 2009, kind of like, you know, it was a different era, and I feel like, you know, I felt like there were more of those sorts of people in a way, but at the same time, you know, I don't know. Edwin, thank you for the $200, my dude. Oh. Hell yeah, Um, Edwin. We're crushing the goal. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, yeah, I started getting in the community in, like, 2008, 2009, and I totally agree with you that, like, I think, like, positive influence and, like, friends that, you know, are, you know, kind of on the right path, I think, are, like, they, they do go a long way, and I, I know people, a lot of the people back then that were, like, you know, sort of fringe problematic in my, like, local community, like, in Washington, like, I feel like over time, yeah, um, you know, they all ended up like pretty much all of the people that stuck around ended up being better people. And yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's a, uh, yeah, I definitely think there's something there. Um, that's definitely been one, you know, thing that people have been bouncing around a lot is like, you know, talk to your friends, like even, you know, kind of normalizing or making it cool to care in a way about like the right thing Mm -hmm. like you know hugo has been talking a lot about this particular subject where i think in the past you know hugo has been when he was a lot younger you know he'd be problematic in this sense you know like kind of not really you know respecting you know women's feelings and things like that Mm -hmm. uh in terms of the dating world or whatever 
and talking about kind of his journey publicly and showing DMs from a, a private DMs from a friend. He showed that one of his friends messaged him like, hey, man, back when you told me to stop using, you know, gendered language as, per, uh, as pejoratives at the time, I was like, oh, this Hugo motherfucker is being, you know, esports. You know, he's cleaning up his act too much for esports. He's losing his sense of self or whatever. But now I realize looking back that that was actually a very admirable thing. That was a very noble thing. And like now, I, you know, I, I realize I look up to you. Um, and it's like little moments like that, right? Where that's like, that's yeah. an actual, you know, I don't know. Yeah. And that's yeah, something we like, all can do. Yeah, definitely. Anybody who's like people with a platform who are like pushing a more positive kind of community, like that's so good. And I feel like we definitely need to, uh, we got to find a way to promote that. Well, you, know, you did right? that. There... You did that, remember? Yeah. Like 2012. Yeah. We used to say R, the R word. We used to say I know, we used to say it was a positive thing. Um, yeah, I don't know how it happened, but it and happened. You did that. You were, I think, I want to say you were one of the champions of like, yo, we got it. Like, this is like, yeah, well, I, I talked to people stop. like, you know, in the hotel room, you know, I was like really just talking about it on the street, uh, but yeah. I cared about it and I knew that it was the right thing for us. I, I feel like with this, this is more like uh, in the dark, right? Yeah. Like we were using that language in the open and broad daylight. The issues that I think we're dealing with now are issues in the dark that we don't hear about. Like, yeah. obviously, you know, if, if people were saying like, "Oh, hey, I'm hitting up minors in the <laughs> hotel room," I would be like, "Hey, man, you probably you really shouldn't, do, probably that. shouldn't like, do that. We yeah. need to talk about that right now." Um, and I feel like things that are in the dark, right? Those are the things that, like, the first step is how do you get them out? Um, yeah. And you could take two lenses on that. It's like the people who are hurting enough to like hurt other people, or you know, the people who are victims. You kind of have to work it from both sides. I don't know. I'm thinking about right now. Um, how Healthy Gamer is doing like the, the, what's it called, the recovery coach thing? Like there's a network, Dr. Mm. K is helping create a network of people who can talk to other people. Yeah. Like that's the grassroots nature of that is super dope. And I feel like if we could have more grassroots, like people talk, people in the community talking to other people in the community just because, that might be a really good way to kind of start at, at some, uh, some place of, uh what do you say like power or leadership and have yeah. roots that touch you know a bunch of the community and then if somebody's got a problem they like know where to go it's like oh i need to talk to a, a recovery coach or whatever we call it like a community homie yeah that's kind of been the whole thing i mean so because i don't hear about it right you i don't you, i'm sure you didn't hear about i did not hear about any right i don't hear about it not as they were happening and i've said the to thing people is... like i really wish that i had a bat phone where people could call me you know when things are really bad Bathroom, but I don't like and uh, what do you do about that yeah we don't know about it what can we do we've got so like this is the kind of thing where it's like you know I mean I talked to you a little bit about this as it was happening too but like we've got the code of conduct panel and I think the code of conduct panel like with their kind of anonymous nature I think that they they're part of their mission statement at least is providing a way for people to kind of feel like they have that resource and that hotline if they need to you know kind of come forward about this sort of thing but i feel like the problem is that they're one they're very overworked right i mean mm -hmm. i feel it just feels like like from the outside looking in it feels like they've always got you know backlog of cases and things like that mm -hmm. and you know because they i think i think so much of it for them is like doing investigations and things like that that it's probably tough for them to tackle things at the scale you're talking about with like a like a network like i think the thing you're right. imagining so how dr k's i i i, I, just I want to know stuff to come it. into the if i had one point i want if we, if we can get more to come into the light then that's good and i also even want to think about like how this moment while it sucks like we're bringing things that already were there into the light yeah. like yes maybe it felt better three weeks ago or a month ago but like we have to acknowledge that those things had already happened yeah right like why why do we really feel better it's just that we didn't know about it so we i feel like for us it, as yeah. community members it's important for us to understand that when we hear about things like this that that was already there and we just didn't know about it so the discomfort we feel like it's important that we pick that up and honor it right and, you know it, and it goes without saying by the way i mean just just because neither one of us has said this yet you know the reason it might feel better or whatever for us is the opposite of how it feels for the victims probably right where it's like every time you know it's like oh no another bad story that's a, that's another victim that was able to flesh their um or survivor i should say that yeah that was able to kind of flesh their story out and and get something off their chest so yeah uh you know it's it's not really about like that's kind of how i've been framing it for myself is like 
Is it really about how I feel reading Twitter, or is it about you know the the the, the justice that you know survivors kind of deserve? Yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I, I want to talk about the network um, that you're you know like like I'm trying to think about what this might look like at a, at a practical level, right? Because it's like. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool if, like, there was a well-known way. This is, like, this feels like a goal. This feels like a good goal. It's, like, what if there is a way for a member of the community to be, like, hmm, there's, like, a grievance that I have. Maybe even nip some, nip, nip into the bud. Maybe before it even gets spirals out of control. Yeah. There's a grievance or I have. Or a friend to say, like, hey, my friend, like, I'm really close with them. I think that something's going on. And yeah. And I just feel uncomfortable bringing it up. Like, I don't know how to do that. What is Dr. K trying to do? Is he trying to make a network that's, like, bigger than... Because I, I think the Code of Conduct panel, I think they might have something like 20 panelists or something. Yeah. Almost all of them anonymous except for Dr. Right. K. Right. No, it's not about... It's not even about panelists or making rulings. It's about... Uh, it's, like, basically... Imagine that a recovery coach is literally, like, a... Like a... Not a therapist, but imagine that it's almost like a... Like a... A homey version of a therapist. Like, you call the yeah. recovery coach and the co recovery coach is like a therapist but just not a therapist at all it's like a homie just a yeah. person who you call who you could talk to about stuff who and that person like knows what they're talking about uh because they're connected through dr k and they've gotten some training and yeah okay they're not just a random person and we hit the 1k goal thank you so much everybody we'll keep taking donations Woo! that's sick 35 minutes jesus yeah i i'm i will match you know 1k of those so thousand of my own dollars so we're actually at two thousand uh one hundred and what to me what it looks like to be a member of this kind of like bring it into the light community is just someone who actually cares about the community and who cares about everybody who's going to call and you know who's going to uh use appropriate discretion but like force the right force the issue of you know what's the right next step right um, like if it and needs I don't to be think escalated that that's so so hard yeah yeah, it does feel that way. And that's something that can even be tackled at, like, the – almost the local level. Like, I feel like, you know, this is one thing that I kind of realized – it's been – it's been – like, like – Also, just real quick, someone asked, yeah, how do you stop it from being infiltrated? Just, like, the way that you generally do this, like, you, ha you have to be aware of abuse. You need measures to make sure that, um, like, you can catch it when it gets really bad. But generally, like, you shouldn't – in my experience, it's good to bring something into the world even though there's, like – possibility you know for abuse and like you figure out the abuse cases as it goes in other words like yeah when i when we release features on twitch like some people will use it the wrong way but you know if most people use it the right way then you're like a bunch of people are um getting a ton of value and then you kind of handle those other cases and it would be a big 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 problem if someone who is you know representing the community trying to help didn't help and actually hurt that would be yeah. really, 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 really bad. If they were intentionally hijacking it. Yeah. I like that you brought up the Twitch example. That reminds me of, like, you know, it's like building, like, like, building, like, subs products or whatever, and it's like, what about the people that are going to do fraud and the people that are going to do it? It's like, well, yeah, you got to handle those, but yeah. that doesn't mean we just can't take subscriptions at Twitch, right? Yeah. That doesn't yeah. mean we can't just have bits, you know. It's, right. um, yeah. It's the same as in a game, right? Like, you you ne'er shine and it works sometimes doesn't work all the time you know you yeah. try to use it when it does work you try to sometimes. figure out when it doesn't work and like yeah. don't do it in yeah. That yeah that makes sense the but um you can just not not do it i like the idea someone someone in chat i saw someone in chat I'm, I, I am curious to know a little more someone said house of three so i know house of 3k is like they're they're like a i think they're a crew in new york i want to say crew is the right word um and yeah, you know, so my own journey has. Oh, so yeah, I was gonna say someone mentioned that they have established some sort of like support hotline for the, for this exact sort of thing, and that's kind of where my head was going. Was like, this sounds like the kind of thing that can can be implemented at the local level pretty well. Where like, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it depends on the scene, and I know that obviously some scenes are going to be better about being proactive about this than others. But like, getting into uh, ultimate in the past like year or two has been interesting because it's kind of reconnected me with what it feels like to be part of a local community whereas like with melee now i feel like when i talk to people in the melee community like i'm i'm usually kind of almost doing so at a national level i'm not that dialed into the the local melee scene anymore like you know when you think about going to tournaments in melee now right bobby you just think about going to summit you know majors right things like that whereas with ultimate i was going to weeklies i was going to wnf and like kind of learning of you know i was like oh this is like the local you know these are the local streamers these are the local you know 
And I feel like when, when it comes to implementing things like this sort of network, I feel like even this is the kind of thing where, you know, whatever you want to call them, social workers or whatever, this, this kind of feels like a, a role that can exist at the local level that like, if it's, you know, you can imagine like any local community that services, you know, 100 to 300 people maybe has a designated set of people, almost like imagine a Facebook group and how there are moderators. It's like, what if we establish a culture where the sorts of people that moderate, you know, like Facebook smash groups are the sorts of people. It's like, hey, if you have a minor grievance, you know, they're just going to be a homie for you and they're going to be there to hear you out. And like, you know, it, I mean, it doesn't have to be the same people, but, uh, you know, it sounds like that's like a good place to start. Um, at least, I mean, and then, yeah, like you said, if it needs to get escalated, if it needs to, you know, you kind of determine appropriate steps. Um, if it, if it, if it sounds like there's some, you know, gross misuse, yeah, maybe you go to the, go to conic panel eventually. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. We want to do preventative and not right. Preventative, not the reactive, like, cause code of conduct panel is good, but it's like after some bad stuff already happened, it's like punishing. Um, mm -hmm. ideally you have fewer cases like that, you know? That's yeah. the ideal. Yeah. Edwin Budding That's asks... That's when it's really a safer place. Like, having more punishment is one thing. But right. A safer place means that there's less offense. That's what you... <clears throat> right. That's what you ultimately want. Even the punishment is to get... Is to work up to that goal, right? Even punishing people is to set an example for, you know, to prevent other people from abusing in the future. And Edwin asks a, good, a pertinent question, which is like... He says, something I want to hear your and Scar's thoughts on is what do we do after the fact? I've heard from people in other regions who've covered for sexual assault, etc., for people within their region or whatever who express immense amount of regret over their complicity and active role in covering for an abuser. I don't think active retribution is the answer to dealing with them, but how can we encourage these people to grow without absolving them of their past actions? you have any thoughts you there? Yeah, thoughts on that? I, I definitely do. I'll say that... Um, I'll say that I think the fact that they're showing remorse already, like if you're hearing stories, like those are the cases that are that are good like i don't i agree that we probably don't need to provide retribution for all those cases i think that if people are coming forward and they're like oh shit like i've been bad about this kind of thing in the past i feel like it's like to me that feels like half the battle already i don't know but um i think it's half the battle and it, uh, what it tells me is that okay maybe there is maybe there isn't but hopefully there's motivation to actually tell the whole story and i think right. that, that would be really good um what i wish is that we had if we had some way to help people share like what actually happened from their perspective when they made bad decisions um because dang dude um i just feel like if i was in that situation you know i had a close friend and i knew that some shit went down i didn't know what to do about it and i knew that someone else had been in that situation they like actually talked about it yeah and then i could reach out <clears throat> or even just hear their stories and think about like what happened and hear like okay so after the fact i really fucking regret it like i wish that i did something different like what would i have done knowing what i know now well i'd probably do this this and this yeah. that would be really powerful um sort of build up the stories of what how things go wrong you know how good people make bad decisions yeah um and like what they've learned from the experience like i really don't like actually i mean <clears throat> okay so one of the things that i was thinking about is this shower thought yeah <clears throat> so it may may not be so smart but uh maybe half baked is like so okay smart. so dj is one person who had a platform and abused the platform right yeah so it's like when he had the platform he used it poorly and then when that was exposed we took away the platform yeah. uh and it's like when i think about it i almost feel like this is just a big negative it's like it's we're in debt because this platform has been used the wrong way like yeah. i don't think that we should extend his platform but i do think that uh having providing a platform for him to educate about like what i don't know what that maybe he's a bad example but just like you know what was he going through if it is relatable and if it is you know like i don't know man maybe maybe he's lonely maybe he's ignorant about something i really don't know i mean it's not not to excuse but it's just like how in my mind i think about how do you actually prevent someone who is in the same situation to from doing the same action. Like I think about that with Nazi Germany all the time. Um, Cause people ask the question, like if I was there, what would I have done? And it's like, okay, mm -hmm. what could be changed so that people would actually make a different decision? I don't really know, but the best that I've come up Jeez. with is like, if they know about the people who did it last time and how similar the situation was and how they made the wrong decision and why it felt right. 
So you're saying, yeah, almost in the way that it's like- How do you educate, right? How do we educate? How do we learn from this? How do we advance the meta of like mm. how to use a platform by hearing about when it doesn't work? Yeah, interesting. Being able to learn from that. So it's the kind of thing where it's like, you know, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, maybe, I think, you know. How do you yeah, use DJ the platform for good but... after the bad has already happened? Like, how do you pay down that debt, I guess is the way that I was thinking about. Right. Yeah. Because I know there's people in jail who dedicate their lives to, you know, yeah. talking to people who are in the same situation and helping them not go down the same path. I know there's a ton of people who dedicate their lives to that. And like, yeah, if we have people who have really fucked up who want to dedicate their lives to making sure the community is a safer place for everybody, that's good. Like, I don't want to personally kick them out forever. I would like for them to, you know, dedicate their lives to making the community better. That's good. That's like transforming this bad into something that's like better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you probably got to go extremely case by case at that point, but- um... Yes, for sure. And yeah. like, yeah, you need to know that somebody's changed. But for for sure, I I don't okay, I don't know much about anything because I don't usually look into it. But I I know that we've like allowed people to come back who haven't really like apologized or like really expressed sincere True. remorse. True. I have not felt it. Yeah, I don't think that makes any sense. I Thank think that's you, fucked. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um. Yeah, I mean, you probably got to go, you know, I mean, like, yeah, there's, there, I think there's probably something there, and especially, you know, with this kind of, you know, recent sort of wave, I definitely think there were, you know, kind of, you know, cases and abuses that were ma very major, where it felt like, you know, also when you looked at the apologies of these guys, or the, the statements they were putting out, they were very um, dismissive, mm -hmm. and like, they didn't mm -hmm. really show remorse, versus yep. some of the other cases where people... Um, you know, it might they might not have been as major infractions or whatever. I mean, I've seen people like I saw some call outs for people where the the end result was they didn't actually get like because there are people you know down in their local communities and stuff um, where there were call outs for some people where you know they didn't really get banned or anything like that. Um, but you know they came forward and they were like, yeah, you know, okay, I, I cleared things up with you know the person that called me out or whatever. You know, I'm trying to do better. Um, and you know maybe for some of those instances that would make a lot of sense like i saw um like i saw Diskid boogie for example like there was um uh, you know there were some there was an interesting thing where with him like apparently there were some there were a couple people who were lauding him for being very positive um and very kind of but then there was some like one or two people came out and said yeah he's actually made me feel uncomfortable in the past and he put out a statement and he was like well yeah i cleared things up with them and um you know or whatever uh and um yeah he, i don't know i mean i i got the vibe reading his thing that he was he was remorseful and he was like yeah if you have any issues with me like you know let's let's clear them up and and i want to you know commit to being better and stuff like that and you know i don't know i mean at least the way i read it is it, it felt more genuine and i mean maybe there's something there where that's the kind of, the kind of person where this is the you know maybe we can implement something like this this with them. I, I mean but yeah. This is why I, don't, I, mean, I feel like any apology written or whatever, like I, I feel like this is why I like the idea of some kind of content, you know, some kind of like, let me explain yeah. where I was and why I made the decisions that I did and like what I would do next time. I like that because it's right. You'll have actual reflection and growth in the message itself. And I don't know. I just feel like so many messages. Are, and I know that it's like it's asking someone a lot to like say all that shit but at the same time i don't i don't necessarily care yeah you know what i mean they like the to. harm is greater than the breach of privacy or whatever hmm. in yeah. my view like if, obviously if the, really I mean, obviously care, the victim has to be okay with it right like of course yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 but um yeah. long story short i don't think that there's an easy answer to the questions that we're asking right now uh because i don't really feel that um any I haven't seen a community solve problems like this. Solve. Yeah. Yeah. Like the meditation community is like full of this shit, you know? Like leaders abusing their power and oh, like is it? doing not cool sexual stuff. Oh, Jesus. I did not know that. I guess it shouldn't surprise me. But, yeah, sex uh, is one of those things, man. <laughs> yeah. That's one of those things. And I don't know how we deal with that because like, let's talk about how we're a super uh, male dominated community. Like, yeah right start there that's a problem 
right off the bat. And off what do we do about that? I don't know. <laughs> what what do we as individuals do about that? I don't know. You yeah. got to make people feel comfortable, you know? Yeah. In the space. Little steps, I, I guess. I don't know what's really realistic at this, you know, at, at that point. We got to treat people with respect, right? You got to treat mean, people with respect. Then yeah. I think about the idea that like, oh, isn't it cool like to meet people uh, who are interested in the same things as you? It's like, how do you make, <laughs> Yeah. you know what I mean? Like, how, how do you, I don't know, man. I don't know. Hmm. Well, you can't have problems like these running rampant, right? I feel like you, the first step is yes. like, yeah, if, if you want, you know, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that like Smash in a lot of ways saved, like when I got into Smash in college, um, like you got to realize I grew up in a very kind of homogenous environment. Like when I went to middle school, high school, you know, I, first of all, I grew up in a Christian household. I went to a very white private school in Hawaii. Um, Kailua is a town that has a reputation for being very whitewashed, especially nowadays. Um, and that's the town I lived in. And like, I didn't like, there wasn't a single black person in my high school, for example. Um, and when I went to college, and I got into smash, you know, I met a lot of different people, you know, from a lot of different walks of life. Thanks to it. Thanks to smash. I think, um, different financial backgrounds and things like that. I mean, I remember going to, you know, like I'd go to Shane's house, like this was back in the days when it was like eggs and DJ combo and sound wolf and those guys. And, um, yeah, for me, I always, I always credit, I always credit that as like that gave me a lot of kind of perspective. Was like meeting people from different backgrounds, and I think of it as a blessing. So I mean, I think that you know, for me, I think it would suck if there were big, you know, people groups that 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 weren't involved in the community, which is currently probably the case. You know, given how, or it is the case, given how, yeah, um, male dominated we are, and um, and I, I mean, I guess you know video game communities probably like by and large are probably like this but like yeah i don't know it, it's uh yeah it's it's not like you can just say well like you know shit this isn't something you can really fix overnight you just have to like make things better and then hope that future generations you know i don't know yeah yeah there's also like cultural standards and stuff that i guess we could maybe figure out but dude that's so fucking hard <laughs> yeah. i don't know man i feel like you know we're human beings and we're living in 2020 and dude things are so fucked like our normal uh community and culture setting like a machinery just doesn't work in this environment um what i mean by that is like usually a group of people who spend a lot of time together like you'll learn over time what the rules are and how to treat people just because people talk that's just how yeah. that we're like distributed so much happens online so much happens in like these kind of disconnected ways like we don't actually live in one space like we live separately and we come together for tournaments like i don't know i don't know um i feel like we're we're um it's almost like like we're just dealing with big human problems and like crazy weird problems yeah i think we are i mean i think we just are yeah i feel like we just are yeah i feel like we just are we're living I... in a crazy time and we're I feel like we're doing time. better than the mainstream, and I think that's good. And could we? Do we need to do better? And does ever, does the mainstream need to do better? Like apps of fucking lootly. Yes. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, I think the culture is fucked, man. In a way, we gotta be able to talk about these things, and we need to be okay to talk about. Like one of the things that I think was so big about changing the language is yeah. that it was something that wasn't cool to comment on for a while yeah like when we shifted the ability to call it out or to recognize it we had a label for it and it was like culturally okay to say like hey i'm uncomfortable with that that can change everything that's a big moment yeah that was definitely a big moment that actually was a big moment in more than just more than just that one isolated incident of changing the language because it made it i, I think it probably made i mean that was the first case where it was like hey here's this commonly held cultural thing that might be wrong it's like you fix that, and then it's like when the next commonly held cultural thing that might be wrong yeah. comes along, at least we have a framework that we can like talk about it in, right? Yeah. Like, are um, you making this, sa this space safer or less safe for women or for yeah. young people? Dude, and I... Can we talk about that with our peers, you know? Yeah. I remember even growing up. In a way that doesn't up. make them get all defensive and that doesn't, you know, turn it into a fucking fight. Yeah. Because I remember growing up, it was the same shit. Like, you know, not even in a gaming community, but like when I grew up, when I was, like, 15 and 16, like, I was in high school and shit, like, I mean, just every single, 
like everyone I knew in high school, every single person used like oh, my homophobic sucks. language as mm-hmm. like a as yeah. like a you know to like as a pejorative or whatever, right? Like even I even yeah. had like one or two uh, gay friends in my high school that would also call things gay as a negative, yeah, me right? too. and that's just like that was just like the language, and no one would and if and, and no one ever brought it up like no one ever said right and and so you know people got defensive about it if, if anyone ever tried to because it was like yeah. dude yeah i got i got a gay friend he's he says it so what's the problem you know that and that, that's just how it was like it, it was kind of it's fucked looking back because like yeah, yeah you know now when i see anyone using that sort of language one they're in the extreme minority and two like it's very normal to call them out like they're almost like the sorts yeah, of people that normal. still the sorts of people that still use that language they're almost prepared to defend themselves because they know they're doing something um counterculture i guess or like they they know they're doing something that, that that's like a little wrong yeah um and and so it's like yeah it's it's it is a night and day with how shit was 10 12 you know 14 15 years ago uh yeah. which which does give me hope uh, would you and would you say today that um like say you're at the bar with your with a homie and they're acting like a little bit creepy with women like can you kind of call that out yeah i don't know man i think it's a little hard it's i don't little, think it's I'm as sure easy it's a little as hard, and i'm sure it depends on the person i mean i feel like i would for sure um but i definitely think that not everyone would i definitely think that right yeah not everyone would but 10 years ago i definitely wouldn't like when i was in college i don't think i would yeah. Dude, that was the thing, man. Like when I when when I first you know started going to bars and things like that with my friends, you know, like no one no one teaches you this shit. No one teaches you. I know that's what you know, I'm trying to say. We would go to that's clubs, what, yeah, exactly. like you go to dance clubs, and it was like, well, what what are you supposed to do with these dance clubs? People are dancing, and they're like, I don't know. I think you just like try to dance with girls, and it's like, oh, okay, cool. And you know, I'm sure. And then people take that to the extreme, and they're like, oh, maybe you just dance up on them without their permission, you know? And it's like, oh, but then you know, there's someone. Someone's like, well, I think it's okay, right? Because that's why they're here. They wanna, you know, they wanna meet guys or whatever. Isn't that what the club is for? Like, no one knows. No one fucking tells you that shit. And no one, no one teaches guys how to be respectful. No one teaches. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the thing. Is the education? We don't really have a dialogue about that whole thing. We don't have a right? dialogue like, about it. And the and the and the education is always from the point of view of it's always teaching the you know it's like teaching women like how to not get assaulted or whatever and this is the whole thing that 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 always gets tossed around it's like we need to do a better job teaching rapists not to rape right it's like yeah there's a lot of dialogue and there's a lot of um i mean i think there's even parallels with like black lives matter where it's like you know how like like black families like it's common well they'll have the talk and it's like you know here's how you don't piss off cops but it's like well where's the education on the police side of things why aren't they teaching why aren't senior policemen teaching sure yeah right like they you know this this you know figures came out about it's like you know, they undergo like less than however many hours of de-escalation you know conflict de-escalation training well isn't it kind of the same way with like how we teach our our our, our, our young men like i definitely feel like yeah. you know this was something i was ranting about on my stream the other day was i grew up in a christian household and all of the sex education i ever got like i grew up in a church basically right all the education i ever got with regards to any of this stuff was to the tune of oh just don't have sex forehead right it's, it's like you're supposed to like what are you doing you're not supposed to have you're not supposed to have sexual thoughts until you're married right it's like right. oh oh okay well, right yeah, right cool, cool. my bad so then you know then the black and white is like oh i wanted to have sex that was where i went wrong <laughs> right yeah, so i was no, supposed sure, to so sure. okay yeah and then and then if that's where you go wrong then first of all you're just gonna you're just gonna break that rule because no one's fucking realistically doing that. That's why, you know, modern sex education, they say abstinence doesn't work. And then from there, if you're breaking that rule, it's kind of like, well, shit. Okay, I'm breaking this rule. Uh, I'm already on the side of the people that's breaking rules, so I guess I just go all the way. And I think that's, like, that's how a lot of people operate. Is like, they're, like, they're already, they're already th- I don't know. I just think that, like, like, the shit that they taught me growing up about how to treat women was just, like, you don't. You just don't treat them. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. just don't. You're, you're going to, you know, you're going to go to church one day and you're going to find that the love of your life and she's going to be chast and, and whatever and, and you're going to talk to her in a very polite manner and then you're going to get married and only then do you ever have impure thoughts or whatever. And it's like, dude, that's like, it's so not realistic. Like, yeah. that's that's all that I was ever told. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, I've heard, you know, 
Yeah, like as a young as a young man, like it just sucked. Like I remember I mean, I, I, I legitimately remember there was, like, a period where it was, like, for me, I was, like, I, like, didn't really get it. Because, like, with regards to things like sexual assault or whatever, it was kind of, like, look, I mean, I posted a tweet longer about it. I had an experience where someone, um, you know, like, like, sexually assaulted me in, like, a vehicle or whatever. And, like, they were trying to, like, forcibly, like, make out with me. They were, like, holding me down as, like, a bigger dude. And I felt really scared in that moment, but... Fortunately for me, it like I don't think it really like traumatized me or left me with a very heavy mark. I do remember feeling like a lot of intense fear, and I was like, you know, I think that did shape how I thought about like I don't want other people to feel that fear with me. So like when I'm talking with you know women or whatever, like I don't want them to feel uncomfortable like this. So like I'm not going to encroach beyond a certain like boundary or whatever. But at the same time, I remember having this thought that was like, this thought process or whatever that was like, well, I don't think that traumatized me that hard. So I didn't understand why for other people it was like, it could be such an intensely traumatic experience in that way. And it's like, I think a lot of it ties into how we kind of condition kids growing up into like what they're supposed to think about sex. Like for me, when I was in high school and college and stuff like that as a boy, sex was always like treated as a prize by my peers, right? Mm -hmm. You always hear about, you always hear, but like, I remember how big of a deal it was to me at the time when I lost my virginity. And I remember thinking to myself, like, yeah, I lost my virginity. Right. Which like looking back is like, what the fuck? And then for girls, it's like the opposite, right? Like for girls, it's like, you're like not supposed to have sex because it's like yeah. bad. And like, you're like giving yeah. it away. It's like a thing yeah. you're giving away for guys to think you're getting, it's like, it's really weird, right? Like we, we set it up, like guys are winning something from girls. Like that's how we, and like, if you listen to, I mean, you know. If you listen to, like, popular music or anything like that, it's just, like, fucking, what, probably a huge portion of songs kind of have that subtext in the background. So it's, like, I almost right. I almost feel like it's, like, what did... It's, like, if you told, like, an alien species that, like, this was the culture, like, I feel like they'd come back and they'd be, like... And then you're, like, yeah, and that, so now we're having these sexual assault problems. It's, like, what do we do? And then they'd, I feel like they'd come back and they'd be like, I mean, what'd you, what did you expect? What'd you think would happen? What did you think was going to happen? Yes, you exactly. Told, you're, you're telling me you told all the guys that they're supposed to want this thing from girls. And yeah. then you had a bunch of like social, like subtext That's in all what, these songs. And I, shit total, that was 100%. Like, That's what I'm saying, dude. It's like we inherited all these problems from this massive system that we're all a part of. And it's yeah. like for us to be able to solve them as just our little, it's like we're getting those messages from the outside always. Yeah, like we we were all raised. Maybe not one hundred percent of us, but many of us were raised in that environment. So it's like yeah, yeah, and it's like yeah, it's so like what do you think would happen? Yeah, it's like what did you think would happen? I I, I said I this to it. my mom. I don't think she appreciated it, but I told her like, uh, you know, your generation really fucked up. <laughs> like we were born yeah. in this world, dude. You guys fucking, you guys sucked. You guys get an F. <laughs> you you, told you your guys mom just get an dad. F. Like, you told your mom not your dad. Uh, is that Donato? Yeah. I don't know what he said. He said something. I'm sure it was hype. I like the Nato. I feel like he's always got good shit to say. Yeah, he's got. He's got. Yeah. Yeah, I think about that all the time. Um, and I was just thinking as you were talking about, um, God damn, dude. Like, how do we uh, help? rapists not become rapists it's like label, labeling them rapists in the first place it's like what is even their motivations like probably there's a, a bunch of loneliness under it probably there's probably. like you know emotions that are repressed under it you know what i mean and it's like what the fuck dude how do we process our emotions in a healthier way like how do we feel safe with uh i think a lot of it staying like how we're feeling uh, right isn't that like a man like a masculine thing that's like a pro like in our i think culture? that is like, a masculine men can't problem. talk about how they feel like god damn dude all right, let's start with that. I think that for me, um, that has been a really positive thing in my, um, I would even say my later 20s. I would actually say that until my latter 20s, this was, I feel like for me, this got a lot better. Honestly, after I met people like you and some of the other Twitch guys and also like Vish and others in the Smash scene, I, I, I feel like I now have a very, very, like positive kind of male network where 
we are down to be very open about yeah these sorts of things and also i mean a big 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 part of it equally so if not more is like literally making friends with women like the only yeah. way i think you can empathize empathize in the context of like how do you like how do you really feel what it would feel like you know to kind of like be on you know like to, to have a different set of you know those sort of social values and cultural values is like you just have to make friends with women and um i mean honestly that you know if you told that to 16 year old or 18 year old me that might have been easier said than done because i don't i feel like i was a fucking lonely loser nerd yeah and i don't think i really had female friends like that so like so I, yeah and i'm saying this out loud it almost feels like a catch-22 or it's like if you're like a creepy dude who's like the kind of person that might try to do some sus shit in the future it's like what do you do or what do you have that person do such that they don't turn out bad it's like they need to make right. friends with women but and then sometimes I, they don't even know how to do that so then i'm kind of like ah oh, fuck then what do i right. tell what do i tell right them? and so i feel like thinking you know, about my it. my perspective maybe it sounds warped and i do feel weird about talking about it this way but i do care about that person who might be creepy so much because if we can help them right then the women who are who become yeah, survivors yeah. or the people who become survivors like that event never happened right you know like right. it just feels like ah and like i just feel like we know so clearly that punishment it's a stop not, gap, right? It doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, work. Because there's always the hope of like, you gotta oh, I'm not do gonna it. Caught. You got to do it, but I mean. Yeah, you got to do it, but like it can't be your strategy. It can't be your strategy. No, it's it not. It can't be your strategy. Yeah. Um, I definitely fuck, feel like what you're saying and what we're talking about right now might be just the best place to start. It's like, because, you know, okay, we're talking about um, calling out behavior and how sometimes it might be hard we're friends with people who can't talk about how they're feeling. And I'm definitely friends with people who do not talk about how they're feeling. Like that conversation is not going to get where it needs to go for that person to feel any better. Like, yeah. do we all feel like we could talk about how we're feeling with other people in the community? I don't know. But if we don't, then I, don't, I see that as a problem. I think it's important to be able to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like reaching out to people proactively. This is where that's got me thinking. Like, this got me thinking. Yeah, no, this, this is where the grassroots like, network comes comes in comes and really in. starts uh, uh, pulling some weight. Because, like you said, I don't know. Yeah, for me, if I've had times when I've had a friend network where we didn't talk about anything real, we were very surface level. Very surface level. And yeah, then I didn't have um, any like introspection on any level that's like all I cared about was the surface level, and so I repressed all the other stuff, which is like really important. Turns out. You know, which is yes, it's what we were taught to do, Tove. Yeah. <laughs> Me too, man. I was taught to repress that shit, dude. Yeah, that's you what know, my parents it's, did. It's it's yeah, it's true. That's what definitely everyone around me did in high school. That's what they Even were the popular to do, kids, think... the popular kids, fucking all did that shit. So of course I was gonna, you know. Oh hell yeah, the po that's how they got popular, man. And if they didn't fucking talk about their feelings, what was I gonna do? You know what I mean? I didn't even have, even if I wanted rigged. to talk to any, I didn't have. Yeah, the game's rigged, but the game's rigged. We're in a bad spot. I like we're playing yeah, I like the proactive approach like one thing that i have seen like i mentioned like in the past week or two like i've seen a lot of people a lot of people have just been kind of airing out their grievances like i've seen some people i've seen some call outs for not even like you know particularly like this was one instance of you know sexual violence or anything like that or 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 this kind of abuse or that kind of abuse i saw people who were posting shit just about like like my local scene has been mean to me in the past and they made fun of me in ways that I wasn't comfortable with, and I'm just airing that out because it seems like a good time to get shit off my chest. Yeah. And I think some of that stuff, I'm really glad some of the stuff, like like some people were like, yeah, I, I saw I saw a post about, like it was like North Carolina Melee. Someone was like, yeah, people from North Carolina Melee have been mean to me in the past, and these are these are ways that like they've kind of been kind of been dicks to me. And reading that shit made me feel like this is a good opportunity because it's like they're not putting the blame on one person and saying this person needs to be banned or canceled or whatever this is like a good opportunity for like an entire community to kind of be like you know what yeah we uh we need to be better like we need to be friendlier we need to be um yeah like i think i think there's some good opportunity there for like 
cultural change to happen at the local level, which is I think where this needs to start with like, with, if you're gonna talk about like the Smash community. It's like, we need to identify instances where, I saw there was a kid in NorCal um, who posted about how some of the members of the Smash 4 community kind of did him dirty in the past and kind of like propagated these inside jokes that he really wasn't comfortable with. And reading it made me feel like, yeah, this is a good opportunity for those people to reflect on that and realize like, hey, at the extreme le at the extreme end of the spectrum, there are consequences when you do this kind of shit to people. But on the less extreme end, even if it's not about the consequences, like, like, I've been a little shithead, and like, you know, we've been shitheads to this dude. Let's let's stop and let's reach out to this guy and, you know, apologize and 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 try to do better, you know, with this guy in the future. And like, that's the kind of thing where I'm kind of like. Yeah, again, people need to be comfortable coming forward. This needs to not just be like an isolated period of time where there's like some people coming forward and people are kind of riding on a wave or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I think it'd be really cool if we can set up some sort of, you know, networks at the local or whatever level where people can kind of air out this sort of thing um, if they need to get something off their chest. But yeah, also like, just like for people who not necessarily did anything ban worthy or that, 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 that that's really horrible, but people to be able to be like, you know, reflect and realize where they might have done a little bit wrong and like just do better. Um, and, and, um, and reach out to the people that they've hurt, not because of any retribution, not for fear of retribution or anything like that, but just to like kind of stop perpetuating the cycle of like being bad to people and having those people kind of go on and be bad to more and more people. Right. Cause they say hurt people, hurt people. That's like the, yep. Yeah. I definitely feel like we weren't super ultra cool in, in, uh, in my local scene, you know, like when I was Coast, coming up, there were some Philly. people who were more on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking about, like, you know, in, like, yeah, you want to talk about, like, is that Philly? I was thinking about, like, you know, for example, like, Silent Swag. Cases like that, you know, where it's, like, areas where we... Yeah, we had an opportunity to probably take somebody who was, you know, kind of flirting with becoming a bad yeah. actor and like maybe we didn't yeah. handle it maybe we just looked the other way you know right we looked right. the other way yeah and, and um, you know this is this is everything's connected i do feel like sometimes um there's a stigma for associating with people who are questionable yeah right? which isolates them further and it's like okay i i understand You know what I'm trying to say? Like, I, yeah. I don't know how to say it like super elegantly, but someone needs to help people who are like, yeah, on that outside. Like it needs to be safe to help, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and it can't be, it, cause it's one of those things where it's like, what do you expect to happen? If people who are like sketchy get pushed out and like no one's gonna talk to them and be their friend, like yep. they're gonna get more and more desperate for like, you yeah. know, connection and approval. Um, it's probably how that, like things like school shootings fucked. happen, if I'm being honest. You know that was the whole. That's I think this is so funny when I think back to my Christian days, um, uh, AKA before I turned 18, and um, I think it's really funny because the New Testament, the Bible, or whatever, it makes a really big deal about how Jesus like hung out with like prostitutes and like lepers and like outcasts of society. That was like a really big like thing that was like a really big they make a really big deal out of it and it's really yeah. funny because my experience growing up in a christian society has always been that christians just do not do that shit <laughs> like <laughs> they, they they always talk about how jesus did that shit they're For like sure. yeah jesus hung out but that was the whole point like the bible makes a really big deal i mean it's funny because this is two literally two thousand years ago i mean this is like a you know millennia millennia old document or whatever and it's it's making going into great detail about the literal messiah and how he spends a lot of time with like the social fringe to basically fucking prevent them from being actual evil um, and like, you know, casting that sort of like uh, that sort of stigma to the wind. And it's like, oh, well, here we are 2000 years later. and People still aren't fucking doing it. Who purport to be followers of this dude? I just think that's really sad. Me too. But it is funny. Me too. Yeah. And I don't like I said, I don't think that I've stepped up um, in that regard either. Yeah, maybe with this platform, kind of talking about things in general, but I don't think specifically. Um, and I kind of wish that I did, but I do have like some social anxiety. Oh. I'm a, a strange person, you know. Like, it's I'm hard a, to. I'm I mean, a different you kind of person. You can't. But I know that there's people who can make friends with you know anybody, um, and I feel like people like that are 
They're important right now. I'm people, even people more. who are willing to listen. Yeah. Um. I think there's a really big role for anybody like that who wants to give back just in talking to people about like what they're dealing with. Yeah, I do think that something legitimizing will make this work in a way that like just random people saying, hey, I'm like uh, down to talk with anybody about whatever, that doesn't make it, it doesn't feel right, you know? There needs to be um, kind of a purpose to it and some some legitimacy to it. And I don't know who's going to start that, but honestly, I know that the New York scene is like, fired up about this and so if you're yeah. if it was going to be any scene who could start something like this i do i mean i would probably look to me personally just because i'm not i'm not doing shit right now i'm still taking care of myself but uh if anybody in the new york scene wants to like start a hey people who we trust to like listen to other people is like we're gonna we're gonna start doing that at some you know through some discord server or whatever kind of co- take a page out of dr k's book healthy gamer um, I like that that's a cool idea. i think that would be like a huge start was she still in chat i didn't mean to put it on you rishi i just thought it was a... i put it on rishi this is who i thought about and emily emily waves you know she's a really really positive force i think in that scene i was talking with z's yesterday actually we're talking about controller stuff not so much this stuff but yeah i do know and there's some people who i don't think like you know this is a big thing in therapy or whatever uh or for therapists like you have to know what you can handle personally because if somebody comes with a problem and that problem is um it touches your problems that goes bad right we need people who feel secure for sure um if somebody comes at you with a problem and that touches your problems, you mean if there's like some shit that you haven't processed or that you need to work through and then you're Fuck just yeah. not going to be well yeah. equipped. Right. Yeah. You got to know where, where you're on. Even though I think if it doesn't necessarily touch your own or intersect with your own problems or whatever, like even if that's not the case, it's like, you know, it can also just be about quantity where it's like, you know, you can definitely just try to do too much and undertake. And I mean, I've seen that, Honestly, when I talked to like Kyle, you know, from from the Code of Conduct panel, I I just feel like um, God, she's um, yeah, I'm I'm so worried. I mean, I'm I'm concerned for her. I mean, I know she's taking a Twitter break for ten days, which I think will be really good for her. I mean, she doesn't deserve a third of the the shit she gets. Um, but yeah, it's 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 uh, and yeah, and it's not even only uh, just her. I mean, there's there's a lot of people. Yeah. That, and, and I'm also like, I just want to be clear. I'm not talking about like giving one person ultimate authority on everything. I'm just talking about having conversations, having a space for conversations yeah. to happen and like things that need to go further into the light. Like hopefully by allowing this one little crack, you know, in the darkness or whatever, metaphorically speaking, that that will kind of take pressure out of the whole system. Like what I feel is so devastating is when people totally boxed in you know there's no cracks there's just you know you're in total darkness or whatever yeah even one little crack in that you know one connection can help a lot um and i i think that in our community like i like the leadership model where there isn't like an authority structure right i don't have a title you don't you tove don't have a title like we don't have titles like power is very informal and it's based on trust and credibility that's the way that it should be i think um, I, like I do think that so someone said something uh, I think it's Michael one of your, the dude you modded Michael Ritter yeah about how uh, yeah credibility like your ability as a player has a lot to do with your standing in the community I do agree with that and I don't think that that's perfect um, I do wish that there was there was like more ability for people to like earn a lot of trust on a personal level because yeah. someone with a ton of trust you know I don't, I don't know Someone with a ton of personal trust in their local scene will have as much influence as someone who's a great player. Um, I just feel like that's the way that it is. But, you know, you really need to kind of connect with all the, like, relevant people in the scene. But I feel like, yeah, there could be people who are, like, not the best in a region who are doing that. Yeah. I like... um... I like that you put the emphasis on that because I feel like that's, I feel like, well, I mean, my perspective is I feel like we've seen that work. Like 
the whole kind of reform phase that we went through with MIOM in 2012 and shit like that, 2011, 2012, I think was by and large that sort of thing where it was just, I like your, your metaphor, your analogy of, you know, kind of making cracks, you know, into the darkness. It's like, that's kind of, because it's, it's, it's a lot like for, to, to, to come up with like, even, even a panel like the COC, it's like, it's a lot of work. Yeah, if they're it pushing is. against the tide of the culture, but like if you can make it so that people can take it into their own hands at like the local and grassroots level, like I feel like it will go a long way and it'll also ease those bodies like the COC where, you know, right now they have so much work to do because they're just the only people who are even tackling this at any capacity where they're only examining the cases after they've gone critical because we're not really preventing cases from going critical where if we had gotten to these people sooner they might not have committed they might they might not have committed they might uh they might yeah they might not have committed these infractions or whatever i, I don't know i was just saying in in chat um because people are worried about like the power thing and the hierarchies i think it's more about like reputation uh than hierarchy in some way to legitimize like reputation because you don't want to have Joe Schmo be able to be like, oh, hey, I'm someone that you can talk to in a safe environment. Like, yeah, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> right. Right. Hierarchy is um, is a scarcity model, right? Hierarchy, Hierarchy is a scarcity model. Only so it? many slots at different levels of the oh, tree. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Asian model, that's, it's not that way, right? If everyone contributes a lot, then everyone's reputation goes up. You know, if there's, we're being honest, there's, there's no slots, there's no like, you know, whatever. Yeah. If we're being honest, like if you actually look at what's going on and what's been going on, like I'm just kind of realizing this as I'm saying it and as I'm as you're saying it, but like some of this has already happened and a lot of a lot of what Definitely. It's like, okay, look, if you actually look at the the patterns of like people who have committed, you know, serious infractions that have come to light over the last couple of weeks, Versus areas of the community that have been relatively, you know, clean from that perspective or whatever, where it's like, you know, there aren't really, you know, it, it, a lot of it, I feel like is the person in the, in question, like, <clears throat> or the people in question, a lot of them, I mean, if you'll notice, like a lot of the people that have been committing abuse have kind of come from the same little networks mm -hmm. and a lot of the places where, um, people I think are doing a lot better are places where there are resources at the non-hierarchical level where there are just examples of, you know, good people in their local community where it's like, they're just, you know, they're, they're kind of already doing some of this stuff. It's like, it's like, you know, like people like, um, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it's hard to say off the top of my head, but like areas where, um, like there are, you know, people like, people like Ryobeat, for example, or people, people like, I don't know. Yeah. Rishi or like people that are outspoken about, um, you know, doing, like, being a, it's like, like, I feel like with people like Raubeat and people like, like Rishi, like, there are, there's kind of a tacit understanding that it's like, these are people that we can kind of look to. And I guess, you know, now that I'm saying this out loud, the really sad part is just Sleepy K, because I think he was also probably one of these people that kind of exemplified being someone you could talk to. And I mean, that's where, I, I guess you got to treat that as the outlier i guess like if that's that's the exact that's an example of a person who was abusing that sort of trust and reputation and if that's the case then you just you just hope that that's the minority i suppose you just hope that that's the minority and that like i mean i, I think that yeah like you said earlier with regards to the whole like you know you build a system and then kind of address the the outliers it's like what can you do right what can you do right like yeah we're not perfect we don't know we don't know how to do it perfectly we don't know how to do it right we but know I what think that wrong looks like. We know what wrong looks like, and I do think that if you look at a lot of the abuses, a lot of them were coming from social circles where it was probably like you know you you have to look at like you know so it's like okay DJ you know Moon D one like that's they're 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 kind of like a friend circle right and you have to imagine that some of that an anti or whatever you have to imagine that some of those abuses were kind of emboldened by them having a culture in their circle that made that sort of thing okay and them not really having you know any kind of role model or whatever that was kind of exemplifying you know hey let's let's back down from this stuff let's like not 
let's let's respect women right um like i do think that it or or like you know an, another example of that would be like sky house where a lot of these stories are coming out from the sky house era of like this is a this is a, a, a toxic environment where like these sort of abuses are like enabled and they when i look at those stories and i think about it's like who was their role model who was their leader with well, the lead their leader was sky right like that's like who kind of called the shots in that environment and it's like if you just change that structure i mean it doesn't have to be some sort of like like you said it doesn't have to be some sort of hierarchical thing where like we assign titles to people but it's just like having that social network or whatever where people are proactively trying to encourage good culture does go a long way i think i don't know i, I why is it so hard at. for like random people to do that that's like really frustrating they to probably me, feel but like i know they how hard it is they probably feel like they can't they probably feel like they don't have that reputation right they probably and feel like, like they don't they a lot of the time they don't you know and so how can credible leaders extend reputation like that's been my question that's been my question for a long time because i feel like that's the key because the people who have the credibility don't always have the time. That's just the fucking way it works, man. There's too many problems for the people with credibility and trust to, to solve them all, especially when there's people with trust, but you know, not, they're not, not always um, talking, walking the walk. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't really know. And honestly, like, fuck, man, some of these issues are like hard and I don't trust too many people to kind of see it the way that i see it i don't know that the way that i see it is right but at least you've got at least you put a lot of thought into it right yeah and at the end of the day i feel like anybody who cares a lot and who cares to think about it has the this again right like i really fucking wish that we had more dialogue about it because then we could have a meta about about things like for me a lot of the things that i talk about uh especially in these situations is i'll start with like, hey, I know what you're saying, you know, person with like a sus suspicious view, because I used to think that. And here's what I learned. And here's the pieces that I saw. And ultimately, I realized that this suspicious view is actually suspicious for a good reason. Mm -hmm. And that this other view is like the right way to see it. Like, I'm kind of helping show the meta. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to say like, hey, you're not a piece of shit, because you believe something sus, like we're all ignorant about different things. Yeah. And like, here's my journey from ignorance to you know some relative wisdom um but like if we can't talk about it if people don't feel like they have a right to talk about their opinion about like how culture should work and how to make the community safer then they'll never know where they're wise and where they're ignorant you know and they'll never gain the the what's the word like the validation or the feedback loop to know like oh okay i really can talk about this stuff like i really do know what i'm talking about because i feel like i just said shit and people were like oh dude i understand what um i feel like this guy is making sense and that was that helped me feel like i was making sense you know mm -hmm. but you at a certain point somebody just has to say shit yeah yeah at a certain point somebody just has to say shit and i mean i i love listening um non-judgmentally you know I, I love hearing what people think and like trying to figure oh well why do you think that and like what about this and i know that that's not always how right? this is, again this is a problem with the internet right if people put an opinion out and if anything's slightly wrong you get fucking murdered Blasted, yeah that sucks man we got to be able to talk about stuff we got to be allowed to be ignorant for two seconds so that we can like not be ignorant anymore i am a fan of that yeah i am a fan of that i am a fan of um yeah, I, I do. I do agree that it is it is tough when you have. Um, that was the whole thing that I mean. I made a little short thread about it where I this was before the Nairo stuff came out about Captain Zach, but I was really displeased with how everyone on both sides of the culture war or whatever were talking about the Zach versus Ally situation, where there was a situation where I thought a lot of people were well intentioned overall. Where I thought that on the ultimate side of the fence there were people that were concerned for captain zach who was kind of the victim in this case and then on the melee side of things there were people concerned about the code of conduct but it just turned into so much vitriol and everyone thought they were doing the right thing and that everyone thought mm. they were in the right i was very upset reading it was like ultimate players making posts that were like yeah i bet the people that want captain zach to stay banned they must be they must be ally apologists 
And then the people on the melee side of things were saying like, yeah, the people that are going against the code of conduct, like they don't realize how important it is for victims to come out in privacy, not engaging with the fact that what, what's really going on here is, well, here's this 15 year old, you know, at the time, Captain Zach, who's been banned for five years. And if nothing else, it's a little suspicious that he was banned for such a long period of time when on the same day or whatever, Mewtwo Queen was banned for a much shorter period of time for sexual assault. I mean, I get it. The optics were bad on both sides, but I just felt like that was a that was an egregious example to me of an instance where the answer wasn't so clear cut. There's a little bit of nuance, and as soon as there's a little bit of nuance, everyone on Twitter just shuts down and doesn't know how to deal with it. Like people on Twitter, people on the internet, even well-intentioned, you know, woke people, maybe especially so, want to put things into two buckets: good and evil. And they want to have this clear dichotomy where if you're not expressing the right opinions, you know, like, like you said, man, I think, I think people need to be emboldened to be ignorant. Like you don't, you don't get growth otherwise. You just don't. And it feels good to, 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 to tune problematic opinions out. But like, I do think it's a spectrum sometimes. And sometimes when there's like, there's issues like this Captain Zach versus COC thing. Both sides see themselves as right, and I don't think it's as simple as you know the good the good opinion versus the bad opinion. Dude, we we need to leave Twitter. Maybe we need to go back to the forums. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Forums were better for nuance. We, we had nuanced ass discussions, but I don't know if they were perfect either. But we need some way. I definitely, I mean, the medium of conversation is like going to be fucking important. It shapes discussion, right? It just does. It's just the way that it is. And uh, I think Twitter blows. <laughs> I, I think that I'm just so much happier off Twitter that I don't know. I really can't even see the positives anymore. I know that it has positives, but I'm still on it's it. It's nice because... to be able to talk to a bunch of people. You know, it's nice that yeah, it's... people had a way to contact me. Yeah, I like that. It's a uh, you know the thing with forums is like you kind of have to be in the in group to use them. Twitter, like, gives you a way to engage with the app group. I do think that's important. There's no other social network that, like, lets you engage with the app group. But instead, people just don't engage with the app group. They just call them bad. Right. So, <laughs> I, right. I think I, 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 or I'd like to think that I'm using it correctly, which is that I, you know, do try to read what people are saying. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, the thing about Smashboards is, yeah, you have to already be an invested member of the community. And I'm, I mean, you know, this is something that you I was You mean because about. you need to find it, you need to read, you need to, to find catch it, up you need to be, Yeah, I want some, I want to be able to engage with people from other esports scenes or other fucking game journalists. Oh, I see. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's just so, there's it's such just, a wall. Yeah, it's, it's a fucking wall, right? right? Like when I was well, The wall is good when we want to talk about issues that have to do with, Correct. you know, what's in the wall. Correct. Correct. For me, it's tough because I feel like I need to stay up to date on this stuff. I don't know, man. I probably got to just fucking... I mean, I'm going to... So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to Yosemite for the next three days. By the way, guys, no streams for the next three days. Uh, I'll be back Saturday. But, um, yeah, like, uh, you know, I'm on... Part of it for me is like... I mean, part of it for me is just like, you know, if there's tournaments and shit, I want to know about them because I'm going to try to commentate them or whatever, right? So it's like literally that perspective. But also just like... Yeah, to me, the thing that it affords us is the ability to talk with people that are, or not even talk, but yeah, we're doing it wrong, clearly. We're doing it wrong, clearly, because it's exacerbating the problem of like engaging right. with the ad group or whatever, Right. even though theoretically it should be the only social network that lets us do that. I don't know. It's No, it's, it's this question is really tough. And the other thing that I've noticed, I've been thinking about, you know, I've been thinking about this because I wanted to make Twitch and I feel like it's possible to, to make the ultimate community platform that will actually help with this stuff. Um, yeah. But one of the things I've been thinking about with Twitter very much is the lack of uh, history and archives. You know, that sucks. We'll, yep. we will go through Hard this, go for, you know what I mean? And, and we'll just, history will repeat itself because you, you know what I mean? You don't learn anything about the past like twitter is only good for right now it feels um twitter is only good for right now that's it's correct. like optimized for what the fuck's happening right now and not for learning or for context or anything like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and i don't feel like there is a place where you can go to like learn the history of xyz community xyz whatever like where do you learn about the, you know the background the context and how people act and why i don't know 
We don't yeah. really have a place. Kairos in chat says we can't we cannot moderate shitters on Twitter. That's also true. Yeah. You can yeah. like there's a ton of yeah. just bad faith motherfuckers on Twitter. One hundred percent. They're not 100%. even there to engage properly and like yeah, yeah, you can't you can't get rid of them. You can't get rid of them. So you're that's fucked, noise. right? That's fucked up. And that's off. probably you know what it is, honestly, now that I'm saying it out loud, that's probably why we got into the mess we have. The reason that we like tune out people that you, this is exactly it actually. This is why people tune out people that it's like someone's kind of saying certain things that indicate that they might have the wrong opinion. The reason we sort them into buckets and we tune them out and we just filter them and we say that this is like the the, the, the wrong outgroup or whatever is because of all the bad faith shitter motherfuckers who like right. use, you know, they're like they have dog whistles that they use that signal like they're just here to cause rabble and troll and be a fucking dipshit. Right. And so it's like, of course you're going to say, fuck that. If someone's saying something that indicates that they might be one of those people, like I don't have time to block every fucking Donald Trump bot. Right. No, you don't. You just don't. So like, yeah, if someone's going to say some shit that indicates that they're that type of person to stay sane, you just have to, you have to tune them out. You have to just categorize them into a mental bucket that says, this is just an idiot that I don't have to engage with. The problem is, that it's almost impossible to tell one of those guys from someone who is trying to operate in good faith but might have a slightly you know differing opinion or whatever. And right. so when you get into these rare instances where you have like the ultimate community who wants to protect this 15-year-old versus the melee community that wants to protect Dr. you know Dr. Piggy and and the COC and 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 the privacy of of of, of sexual assault survivors and things like that, suddenly you turn it you run into the case where you have two well-intentioned groups that are trying to apply the dog whistle rule where it doesn't apply. And it gets very fucking ugly. It gets ugly. Yeah. What do you do about that? I don't know. Like well, I feel, I just feel that right here at the end of the day, none of these companies give a fuck mm-mm. about building true community. None of these companies have given people the tools, people who want to lead community, people who want to contribute. None of these fucking companies, and now I'm getting angry, but like this is how I really feel. None of them give a shit, and none of them are building the tools or even thinking about building the tools that we would actually need to make our community better. The only, we don't have the tools. We well, have you know, the tools you know the optimized is. for like bullshit, clicks, blah, 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 right? And that's just the way that that is. It's because companies need to operate based on their bottom line. It's all a business. And like the, the, shit, the, the, the shit that makes money is just not the shit that enables communities to build better communities. All of those tools were built 20 years ago by like the people that wrote open source forum software. Those guys weren't making fucking money off that shit except for donations. Of course, you know, Jack, what's his name? Whatever, fuck that guy. Jack, Jack from Twitter. Gucci. Yeah, yeah. Like, he doesn't care about any of this shit, and he should, realistically. He's got fucking stakeholders. It pisses me off, dude, because you know I've been at Twitch for how many years? Yeah. Saying the same thing, right? Discord knows what I say, too, right? They haven't reached out to me and said, oh, hey, we want we want Bobby Scar, you know? We want somebody who's going to help us build real community. Yeah. I don't think that anybody, like... They're just so distracted with the numbers and with the day-to-day of their own jobs and all that bullshit. And so it's tough, right? It's tough to be us uh, as community members who care. It's just tough because, right, you're just you're what you're saying right now. I feel is the problem, and if we could solve this problem of reputation, man, so much could be better. But today, like, we just don't. We don't, you can't tell the difference between those two people. What I was thinking about when you're saying that is like low tier God, right? Who's not a bad Street Fighter player, but is a fucking troll, right? He'll get good enough where you kind of like, you don't necessarily know, but he clearly doesn't give a shit about the community. He doesn't. Clearly doesn't. No, clearly doesn't. And there's other players who came up, right? And they eventually got really good, but they were as good or not as good as him at one point. And you can't tell the difference between somebody who's really well meaning and trying and who's just not that good yet. And someone who's just never even, they're not even trying to get good. I, that's how I feel when I think about social media and this, like, uh, the ignorance problem, right? Some people are ignorant and well-intentioned. Some mm, people are I see. I see. And how the fuck do you tell the difference? Like, you can't from, you can't from a tweet. You just can't. You, you got to keep going. Yeah. You got to keep going. And you know what? Like, a lot of the time, the people who are ignorant are not well-intentioned or they don't feel safe enough to, like, 
back down in a in a given interaction. So even yeah. if you engage with people who are like showing their ignorance, nine times out of ten, it's going to be unsatisfying. And you know what's crazy? That one time out of ten matters so much. Yeah. That one time out of ten matters so much, but like nobody's got the time to fucking talk yeah. to nine percent ignorant people. Is they're going to take all your energy, dude? They're it's take all your energy. Really brutal. It's really brutal. Dude, and the shit that, that that worries me and that weirds me out is I think the bad actors are starting to try to co-opt the the fucking good language or whatever. There was this dude. I told the story on stream already, but when I made my oh, twit longer again, about man. my own sexual assault experience, like there was this dude. I mean, I got obviously I got a couple shitters and shit in my mentions and in my DMs, like you know, saying some pretty hateful shit to me. But yeah, I had like one dude, and he was like, he DM'd me, and he was like, "You don't need to mansplain rape or whatever." He's like, stop trying to mansplain rape. Um, and I, like, looked at his bio or whatever. Obviously, he had, like, five followers or whatever. But his bio was, like, it was, like, BLM, he, him. It was, like, hashtag BLM, he, him, trans rights or human rights or whatever. And I was, like, okay. Dang. And he said, like, stop trying to mansplain rape. That's, like, a woke word. Mansplain. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm, like... You know, it's kind of gotten to the point where, like, the fucking trolls, like, the shitters are, like, co they're co-opting the fucking woke-isms. You know, they I know that, you know what I mean? Huh? I yeah, they're mafia. They're mafia. Yeah, they're mafia. They're just mafia. But they're actually playing the game, right? They're looking like town as best they they're can. They're trying to look like town, exactly. And it's infiltrated, right? And it's just, it's just fucked. What, do, what are we to do? What are we to do? If you can't kill mafia, we're fucked. Town is fucked. Like, that's just the way that goes. And I feel like we have mafia and we can't kill them. Yeah. Yeah. What do you we got to get? I mean, you got, you know what it is. I mean, this is my own like personal thing. And I don't think this is a sustainable solution. But for me, I feel like it's literally a skill. Like figuring out, like diagnosing very quickly if someone's actually operating good or bad faith. And like, it's hard sometimes. And like, whether it's worth investing energy on somebody to like parse what they're saying. It's not easy, and I mean, you know, it's like, it is something, it is a skill. It is a skill that, like, you have to build as an individual. I mean, you don't have to. I'm not saying I think it's reasonable for everybody to, right. but I think for me, oh, we can it's been a skill. That. It's been a skill that I've learned, and it's like, I am slowly finding that I'm getting right. better at, like, engaging with people that I ought to engage with. And I don't think a lot of people are good at it. I think people just straight up don't read. I think people don't read. Um, you get rewarded for reading, right? Like, I even, I mean, when I posted my tool longer, my tool longer again was about, was about an experience I had in high school before I joined the Smash community. And I got a couple people in my replies that were like, man, the fucking Smash community is so terrible. I can't believe this shit happened to Tove. And I was like, if you read my tweet longer, this didn't happen to me in the context of the Smash community. So you wouldn't be saying that. <laughs> You're just not reading. Like, I think most people, I think a lot of people just don't read. It's fucking right. tragic. Even well-intentioned right. people, maybe even I especially right. well-intentioned, I think they don't read. I'm not I'm not trying to call those people out. I get that they're trying to make me feel better or whatever, but I'm like, did you read what I wrote? I don't think you did. So I said this on a different stream. I just see questions about it. I want to clarify this. When I say bad actor, the way that I think about it is that, like, we've got... So we're a Smash community, right? And people who care about the long-term health of the community, those people are acting with a shared intention. There are other people who are in the community and don't care about that. And when they engage in topics like that, that's what I call bad faith. In other words, they're not trying to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. But still, they're in the conversation, but they don't actually care about what we care about. That's bad faith. Being in good faith means that you do care about what we care about. And the way that you show that you care is that when you're wrong, you listen and learn and reflect. Like that's the way that that goes. And so as I say that, you know, I'm thinking about sometimes people are bad town, right? They play and they're actually town and they really do want town to win, but the way that they talk, the way that they think, the way that they, right? It's just not helpful, it's counterproductive. So that's bad town. What do you do with a bad town? Like they need to learn how to be a better town. But the way that they learn is by being bad, right? And having help, that's the way that people learn. So there you go. It's kind of, uh, that's the whole thing in my mind. Like this is why we need the internet or our discussion space as a melee community to be safer, to be ignorant. 
It needs to be safe to be ignorant, especially when you're ignorant in good faith. Yeah. Because then you have the opportunity to learn. But like if, I, I don't know, we just factionalize, I feel. Like if, if people are ignorant and then they get pushed out, well, then they act more ignorant, I feel. It's like the only thing they can do. They won't be received. I, I no, that's a good point. So at the end of the day, I feel like we just don't have the tools that we need as community leaders and community members who care to organize effectively and solve these like deep problems. At the same time, like the weapon that we do have is our ability to talk to each other and to like help each other out. And yeah, and yeah. we have to go with the way that we feel way more than I think that our society is cool with. Like, I think that not being able to feel things is like such a piece of shit that we've inherited from our society. In other words, like when you know that something's wrong with somebody, you know, and they're doing some suspicious shit, but you can't say it because it's a little bit vague. Yeah. Uh, as soon as we can't do that, like it's over. I mean, imagine if you had to play Mafia that way. You can't have any reads or vibes. Like reads and vibes is the way that we, like, Yeah, I like I like the in chat. Someone said the, the just like in Mafia, the silent silent town or the they are the most uh, yeah they're the most harmful. <laughs> they're actually that's a great analogy. Yeah, unless same, they're the ones who are shit. really sitting and thinking and and analyzing. In which case, when they're called on, they better say some shit. Yeah, staying peachy asks. Uh, I think that's Meredith. Could you go in a little more detail about how someone goes from bad town to good town? Who bears the burden of that education? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the shit we were talking about. Like, the, um, a lot of it is just kind of that's the existing the, social support group, or not support group. Question. Just, yeah, yeah, that is, that is the question, but I think a lot of it that's is that local, question. that local, you know, culture, like, 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 it's, I think a lot of that will come to, at least it will start with local scenes, and, like, having people that people feel like they can trust as even just friends or people to talk to where it's like hey you know like reaching out like being proactive reaching out to people that you know might have problematic opinions or whatever and, and, and helping them kind of you know stay on the right path or whatever like I think that a lot of that stuff does happen at the local level I think a lot of it happened at my when I was getting into Smash um, over time um, you know with like the Washington Smash scene uh, back in like 2009, 2010 and stuff like that and I think that like with MIOM 2011, 2012 um, I mean, I don't know I saw the language of a lot of different Smash scenes change with that kind of leadership from, you know, people like well, you, Bobby um, it does I think that like for if you're a bad if you're bad town or if, if, like for bad actors like I feel like for them like, there are, there are going to be the types of people that want to be better and the types of people that... And I think that, like, making bad actors want to be better comes down to what you paint as being cool. Like, what the leader... What, what local leadership acts like and what the, how they talk and, like, what they talk about and, like, how they engage with people around them at, you know, at events and, and, and online and things like that. It's like, if, you, if the cool people locally are, like, the people that are doing good, like, people want to emulate those people. Yeah. We communicate those values by like w through what we care about and people understand what we care about based on what we talk about and what we notice, you know? Yeah. And so when we started to care about language, like the reason we cared about language was to make the community safer and more inclusive and more accessible to people who are coming in. And that's, I feel like how it became cool or whatever. It's that we actually cared about something and that we were all working towards it. And like, yeah, it's kind of like, if you don't care about what we're caring about, then that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and a good I, question. I, yeah. Yeah. How would you define your local community on the internet? What is virtual locality? Um, yeah, I think that it's, um, I think that it really depends. Like, uh, I know that for, you know, it's interesting because, like, engaging, this is something I talked about earlier. I just think, like, engaging with Ultimate, I think that, I think that local scenes are still very much alive and there still are. I mean, it kind of surprises me because I'm the same way. I'm kind of like, for me, like, in, in, in the context of Melee, I'm more national, if that makes any sense. But I do think that, like, if you look at, like, regional Facebook groups, I mean, they're still very much a thing. Regional discords, right? Community discords, character discords. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of that kind of um, segmentation. Um, 
where I feel like a lot of the old rules still do apply. Um, sometimes it's literally regional, like in the case of regional Facebook groups, and then sometimes it's just like Discord servers and groups of friends. But I still think people tend to sort themselves into those sorts of groups. So, I don't know. I think so. I think a lot of the same rules do apply. I wanted to say something real quick about the yeah. the burden of education. <clears throat> One of the, the this is something that I think about a lot. Mm -hmm. The education that we're talking about is uh, helping people who actually are in ignorance. In other words, they don't they don't know what they don't know yet. Helping them learn something new. That is so difficult. I feel like there's a term in you know capitalism or whatever. It's like audience development. Like you can have an audience and you can get them ready for what you're about to present. And I feel like that's such a huge part of the problem that we face in other words like we could all do our best to educate uh and put resources out out there for people to like you know consume or read or whatever and learn from but uh that information needs to hit people when they're ready to hear it and a certain kind of person you know people who are generally not interested in hearing it and i feel like that's why when i'm you know my focus on just enabling conversations uh that that's why i'm focused on that because basically like I want people who are for lack of a better word like ignorant about something or who don't know how to act in certain situations or who feel like oh man you know I'm in this local scene and there's one woman trying to get into the community and like there's five guys and we like are all kind of crushing on her and it feels awkward I don't know what to do like yeah what the fuck do you do about that I don't know either but like can we start talking about it like I think that's so important um, and God, what am I trying to say yeah, at the end of the day, I feel like it needs to be cool for people to come and say like, hey, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm having like a problem. I don't know what to do about it. And for them to feel like safe having a problem. You know what I mean? Like, how, how can we help people have a problem and feel like just by telling us what the problem is, like you're not going to get abandoned or whatever. I feel like that's the most important first step. And if we do everything but that, it still won't be enough. That's my beef. If we do everything but that, I don't think it'll be enough. I think that middle, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that connection point is yeah. the most important point. And I don't know how to do that without like just enabling conversation in a non-judgmental safe space. I just don't know how to do it without so that. So do like Dr. K is trying point. to do something similar to that. Is what yeah. I'm hearing. Specifically about like mental health. Specifically. Specifically about, about mental you're health. Having a... But he's trying to do something similar. Yeah. You absolutely. should probably just talk to him. Yeah, we could do that. We should probably either get him on the show or like whatever. You should talk to him. It, I mean, it doesn't even have to be a stream. Yeah, we could probably even just say, hey, can one of your recovery coaches help us Yeah, create like a recovery coach-like program for our community? Right. I it's think that that's like a totally different flavor, obviously, because it's going to be less necessarily mental health focused. But I mean, it sounds like if he's taking steps to sort of try to build this thing out, he's probably at least put some thought into it. So Yeah, it's just like culture. Uh, it's like a it's like a culture system, right? And, it, and I really do feel for... Um, Dang, what is it? Low, low man. Uh, low man. Low man. Yeah, low man saying. I mean, I've been kind of reading what uh, they've been saying. It's been a lot about how people who do care and who do want to help don't have a voice, and you shout into the void. You don't have that ex that reputation or that like. I feel for that. I think that, that sucks. Uh, I know that there are people who want to help and who are capable of helping, and they just don't have the position or the you know what I mean? The space to help. And I want to unlock people who are, you know, we got one, 1. 1.3 thousand people in this chat. I feel like most people who are here listening to this and who care, like those are the kinds of people who I feel should, you know, should be like empowered to help. Anybody sitting and listening to a conversation about this, I think that's like a really good indicator that uh, I feel yeah. like you'd open to learning right and not like yeah i definitely think you know i mean i definitely think that's the i i yeah i'm, I'm i hope we can leverage this moment honestly because it feels like a lot of people are tuned in right now and they're anxious to do and to do better and to to empower themselves and others to be able to do better and, and to be in those situations yeah, and I'm, I'm having, like, you know, you, you guys know, right? I'm not on Twitter right now. I haven't been streaming. I'm really taking time to, 
like get my own head straight uh just about you know just about stuff um and so i feel really bad that i feel both honored and privileged that there is a you know that all y'all are listening um and that you care about what tof and i have to say what what i have to say and i also feel pretty guilty that you know i'm not kind of involved on a day-to-day -day basis that's hard for me you're being a role model you're for saying. you're being a role model for the side of it that is uh you know it's like know your know your limits and know what you're okay with chipping in yeah and right someone's, now maybe someone's right got to see that yeah right now i am kind of like yeah I'm at, I'm at a place where i don't have much to put in at the moment um and i guess i i want people who do have the time and the energy to feel like inspired to just do something um and I, I hate that I don't have like a good answer for like what that something is. I really do hate that. Um, but I feel like, you know, if, if anybody in the New York scene wants to pick up uh, a project of just getting like a little conversation network started with kind of like, you know, a list of people who are down to listen to whatever and a hotline, <laughs> then that's like a really good start. Just kind of poking around with that. I want to anybody around, who's in it, you know, and, and Tof, I don't know if you have the time to think about it. I know in the next three days you don't. Um, but I feel like any kind of hotline with anybody, uh, Ry yeah, Ryobi, I feel like a lot of people super duper ultra trust you. I feel like if you could facilitate that, that would be dope. Again, don't want don't to call anybody out in specific. Obviously, yeah. Anybody who wants to rise to that and give it a shot, I don't know. I just feel like that could do so much. It could do so much. Uh, I think Rabbi might have just gotten here. So yeah, what we're talking about is like, just to put things in context, like like Dr. K from Healthy Gamer GG. It sounds like he's doing something where he's putting together. What was the term you used, Bobby? Like, recovery, coach recovery coach program. Someone, it's somewhat not community service. It's uh, it's something else. It's like uh, what happens like when? Damn, dude, I'm just gonna say like uh, if there's kids who have been like child services or whatever or family what's the name of of that program for like people who are underprivileged and struggling community services or child child support like support Sounds services like one of those. basically something like that it's just a group of people who have time and energy and who give a shit uh and who know like what to say well there you go rotaro's got a got a homie who's in the coach program social services something cool. like that okay uh, so yeah for our community it's basically like just basically that it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could just be a pilot, which means that you got like two or three people who can talk, you know, to one person a day. And at the end of the day, I don't even know if anybody would uh, like apply or call the hotline. We don't know. We have no fucking idea. I have no idea. Yeah. But just having a place where someone with something like heavy or important on their mind could talk about it, melee specific, I think that would be a huge difference from what we have today, which is if you're struggling with something, you don't necessarily have anybody you could talk to you and it's like a, a friend who's understanding yeah and it's like a and 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 this is and this is um to kind of paint the picture here this is uh also it's like people not just people who have grievances against others but also potentially people who feel like they've done wrong in the past or they've been complicit in the past like people who feel uh like they could have like perhaps they feel like they're bad actors who and they want to do better like they can they can also reach out and it's like a network of like homies basically where it's like you can just talk about this kind of shit and like be heard and be guided if that's what they need right um yeah. like I, some I, I really want to say something else i'm so sorry to i know i'm cutting you off a little bit um but i'm reading what michael radar is saying and i think it's really important um like here's one thing that i've learned in my journey and some of y'all might completely disagree and that's okay but i feel like i need to say it yeah for our community i believe that we create our morality together my right. code is basically that i want everybody who cares about melee to feel safe and welcome in the community and i'm sure that y'all have noticed but that even applies to people who are creepy and who make the safe the space less safe for others in fact i really care about the people who make the space less safe for others because like i need them to be able to feel safe and talk about it because otherwise they'll never change and if mm -hmm. we can't change people who are like not you know what I mean? Like not helping, then we're fucked. Because uh, then, like it just becomes us versus them, them war. And so, basically, if if anybody who wants to work on this or wants to think about it, I really implore you to just have in your mind like that your goal is to help everyone feel safe. And so, 
you look at the person you're talking to, you think about who they're interacting with, and you think about what they're saying about how this other person's doing this thing is making me feel this way, and I'm doing this thing, and they're acting this way. And it's like you have to think about, okay, what can help them both feel safe and welcome? Maybe somebody does not, like they're not willing to be in the community and help this other person feel safe and welcome. And then it's like, okay, well, what am I gonna do with that? Like, you're gonna be fucking banned, right? If you're not willing to change your language, you're not willing to change your behavior and you're fucking banned, dude. I'm sorry, I'm just telling you right now, you're gonna get in trouble and things are gonna get worse for you. I'm still here if you wanna talk about it tomorrow, but, right? Um, and so I, I don't want people to get like, um, bogged down in this idea that you need to like understand morality perfectly none of us do and in fact like one of the things that i've learned is that you know i didn't fucking right to, we were talking about using uh slurs back in the day because we didn't i didn't know how it made people not like me feel and so like morality changes it, it, right as more kinds of people come into the world and more kinds of people want to express new things it's like it's changing what hurts people and what doesn't and you know so we're just we're creating it together and I don't want anybody to feel like they can't participate because they don't know everything. The point is that you don't know everything and you go into it knowing you don't know everything. And that's why we listen and learn. So that's yeah. all I had. Yeah. Well spoken. Well said. I think, um, I think there's already evidence that, that, that you're on the right track because like, if you look at some of these, you know, these grievances in the past week or two, a lot of these guys clearly don't like if you look at some of these half apologies Ugh. some of these guys clearly don't feel remorse they don't want to be better and Ugh. that's what, that's what we have to parse out right like that, that that there's there's evidence that it's like you can like the really the, the really bad people like we you can tell um you can tell the people that don't want to change the people that don't want to get better you can tell yep i don't know yeah cool it's cool the other thing this is the last thing on my mind like if you are yeah. where you want to be like heard more i guess here's the here's the balls the balls out play um so maybe not the best metaphor but the i don't know man if, i feel like uh a lot of people are in similar position especially now in covid days like people feel isolated people feel lonely like if you're down to talk about your actual experience like up close and personal i think that people will listen you know it's like one way to go from someone shouting into a void to someone who has interest from other people what do you mean just talking about honest if random people are just talking about what they're honestly dealing with um yeah as it's happening and not after the fact you mean i think some people are literally doing that that that's how i that's how i that's how i consider um like i mentioned the dude um, who basically called out North Carolina mail. I mean, I guess that's kind of in the past, but there, but, but these, these incidents of like, yo, there's this shit, there's the, you know, the community has come up with these, like, like my local community is saying, you know, these nasty things and maybe it's not like cancel worthy type stuff, right? Maybe it's not criminal or whatever, but it's like, it hurts and it's, and it's bad and I don't like it. And like, I feel like those people, like th that's kind of what they're, they're doing. And I like that. I like that there's this wave of like, yeah, I think the wrong idea. I saw Edwin shout this out earlier. I think the wrong idea is like, oh no, they're distracting from the really serious stories. They're distracting from the people coming out with sexual assault allegations. Well, it's like they're not. I mean, that's one way to look at it. But I think the way that I want to look at it is like, this is how we're actually going to change the culture. Is like we are going to be in the midst of things and we're going to talk about it as it's happening and we're going to say, hey man, let's try to be a little better. Let's try to be cooler. Let's try to not make jokes at people's expenses. Let's try to not ostracize people that might turn into bad actors in the future because they felt like the community was against them. I don't know. But yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you. I'm totally with you. I think that uh, I think that that's how the change is ultimately going to happen at a preventative level and not a punishment level is that people got to talk about shit as it's happening. You know? Yeah, Absolutely. How are you feeling, Tove? I'm feeling all right, man. Yeah, I'm, I mean, yeah, me and Karen are driving to Yosemite tonight, so. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. It'll be good to, you know, get outdoors for the next couple of days. I think that's about it for me, man. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? 
I feel like I said what I needed to say. Yeah. I feel good that I'm able to say it on your stream. Thanks yeah. for inviting me. Totally. We'll do My it stream again. dead. <laughs> Doesn't have to be. I mean, I, I, I believe in us. Honestly, I always have. Yeah. Um. I feel like when I look at the broader world, it is worse. I don't think that that's much, you know, but... Yeah. Uh, I feel like it's easy to see that it's easy to miss that. And I feel like we, because we're so small, have the ability to change in ways that the mainstream can't. Yeah. We have the ability to change. We Do we have the tools? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Are we going to get them? No, I don't think so. You know, unless we build them, I don't think we're going to get them. No, no time soon. Mm-hmm five ten years at, at, at least um but uh i don't know man i i don't know how you feel like you got where you are to i i feel like the way that i got where i am is i followed my motivation like as it came to melee right? i invested in being a better player um you know i put out combo videos i ran tournaments um i made sure that my tournaments were super inclusive you know like i just kind of really cared about giving back to the community in -hmm. whatever way i could and i feel like for me it led to obviously i got super lucky but you know it it, every little bit helps and i feel like yeah if there's any way that people feel like they can give back it'll lead somewhere you don't have to solve this big problem today none of us need to solve this problem today i don't think we can um this is definitely the long game and yeah being i I love to that you'd kind of really emphasize that that one community um where they just felt like they weren't being super nice to everybody like at the end of the day that's maybe the biggest way that we can give back is like are we being like kind to everybody in our scene and everybody we interact with and if not like just think about it maybe there's maybe we could do better yeah And that's that on that. And that's that on that. Yeah, I agree, man. And I mean, for everyone, you know, in the chat or whatever, my DMs are open. Uh, so if you need, I, I cannot guarantee that I'll get back to you quickly. I have some DMs I need to get through. But um, if you have any suggestions, first and foremost, uh, you should make the VOD of this available for people to watch later on YouTube, of course. Yeah, this will definitely be on YouTube. This will be on the Reads channel, youtube.com slash the Reads. Um, youtube.com slash BBQ as well, with no underscore is my own YouTube. Mm. Um, which will probably just have more Melee content. But yeah, this will be on the Reads YouTube. I, um... Yeah, my DMs are open if you have suggestions, first of all, about, like, steps we can take as a community that, like you just think it's a good idea or you want to bounce ideas off me, I will check those DMs. Um, Or if you, like, need a homie to reach out to or whatever because you're going through some shit. Oh, my spacing um, sucks! Yeah, like, you can message me. People people DM me about that kind of stuff, and I respond. So, like, I can say that, yeah, if you need somebody, like, I will respond to you. I will try to be prompt about it, although I probably won't. It will probably take me at least a couple days, but uh, yeah, my, my DMs are open. So yeah, I guess the last thing that I'm thinking about is um, if anybody had, uh, if you've watched this stream and like there's moments where you really want to talk about it more or have like more of a conversation, I think that you know not to say like share our stuff because like we want to grow, but uh, if this is useful and can help any of you kind of have a discussion with others in your scene or others. I definitely think it would be good to, you know, kind of like take little snippets from this and kind of like post it and be like, hey, what other people think about blah, blah, blah. Like, here's what I think. Um, Yeah, it'll help the message and the parts of it that resonated with you specifically kind of get out there. I think that's important, you know, it's Mm kind of a signal boost on the parts that that resonate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Q, all right, should we host somebody? 
Yeah, you can figure that out though. Figure that out. You're, the, you're the streamer. Are you gonna be okay with uh, fin finishing up your slippy setup? You need any help? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I almost feel like I was gonna stay. I figured after I did the stream, I'd stay on the call with you and help you make sure you're. I think I might be ready to go, but you could stay on the call with me. Yeah. Okay, I'll stay on the call with you. All right, people saying host PP, I'll host PP. That's a good call. I'm down. P P M D. Raid P P M D. Let's do it. Let's raid P P. Let's say hi to him. Thank you all for watching. Yeah. Much love. And this will be on YouTube. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much to the people on YouTube who just got done watching this on YouTube. Thank how's you. It? How's that? And yeah, people I will. Uh, I'll post the donate. I'll, I got to figure out how to get this uh, donated. I'll probably post. I'll probably get it done before I go to Yosemite, and then I'll post it on. All right, peace out, guys. Have a good, uh, have the good rest of your week. Peace out.